and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Native news, native information, and native fun. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much for joining us. Today, we travel north to Galena, Alaska. We were there when the Iditarod mushers went on through, and we were there when Galena got a brand new health clinic. It's a great show. I'll be back with Galena, Alaska right after this. I'm Brett Lamont. I'm Michael Williams. I'm John Huntington. We Who watch, watch Heartbeat, Heartbeat Alaska. Alaska. The gift of past experience is handed down. There are no greater lessons. By the Nature Conservancy of Alaska, working with Alaska's rural communities to conserve and protect our natural heritage. Heartbeat Alaska is sponsored in part by Chugach Alaska Corporation. This program is sponsored in part by Phillips Alaska. Dreamers who make it happen. I like to dream. Support for this program provided by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We've been here since before Alaska was a state, and we'll be here when you need us. We're here. We're with you. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We travel now to Galena, Alaska. Galena, right on the trail of the Iditarod race. Galena's a wonderful town with wonderful people. They got a brand new health clinic. In Galena, Alaska, it's a new day. Until 1918, Galena was just a good spot to set up a fish camp. It was a bend in the Yukon River called Henry's Point. When lead and zinc mines opened in the area around 1920, people began living here year-round. Galena had only a handful of residents until... Sidney Huntington is a familiar face around Galena. He's seen a lot of changes in this town through the years. But the biggest change came because of events half a world away. Uh, by 42, the war broke out, and so the people that were contracted to do the job for FA were too slow, so they brought in more collusion to get the job done. And so during the fall of 1942, there was hired 500 people back there working, cutting brush and whatnot to build the FA. Where the air runway is on the back here now, the probably 20 foot of gravel lifted off the bar here. A lot of gravel from the area went into making this. It's a huge dike that goes all the way around the airport to protect it from flooding on the Yukon River. A few years ago, the Air Force put the Galena base in what they call warm storage reserving the right to reopen it in the future. In the meantime, Galena began using the buildings on base for a residential school. Students from all over Alaska come here to live and learn. Just being in Galena gives them a chance to learn from example. Oh, Galena is a, is a neat place to live. Galena is very, a very, full of very independent people, uh, people that um, when something happens to someone, they, they really rally around and, and, and help out people. Uh, if someone has a death in the family or there's an illness, the community gets together and helps out by uh, raising funds and um, just really taking care of its own. And Carol's not the only one that's proud of Galena. It's just uh, the, way, uh, the way Galena is. And I, I remember I came here, I first came here as a kid. Um, 1948, and uh, I was well received then. Max and Beverly Hundorf have been running the store in Galena for over 31 years now. 
it's been uh, it's been very uh, very rewarding. Uh, you know, it's a, a something that uh, Bev and I always wanted to do. You know, and uh, and being in Galena, um, uh, you know that we just. Uh, felt that this might be a good place to look at to start a store and then when we decided we we're going to um, uh, we just came and, and like I said the community you know received us and uh, made us part of the community and we've just tried to give service as best as we can and it's been been very rewarding trying to you know trying to do the best we can but the people have uh, appreciated what we've done you know and uh, it's just been a, a, a great uh, two-way you know exchange. People in Galena come to the store to get most anything they need even if it's only conversation but if you're just visiting you may want to get directions because the Hundorf store has no sign. We don't have a sign. I mean, the name is so well known <laughs> up and down the river. We don't need one. And we don't have yeah, a tourist. Then again, Max has a different story. Just, we had a sign on the old place. And uh, when I was going to put it up, uh, uh, Bev didn't want me to tap any holes into the building. So it's still in the warehouse. <laughs> but don't worry if you need directions. That's right. Just so ask so any friendly yeah, person around town. How can you tell the friendly ones? We all wave and we all wave at each other when we're we're passing each other, either by snow machine or by cars. And it makes us really proud because you know we're able to, you know, wave at each other's and and, and you know readily say good morning or you know how you doing. Hello. And this week they really have something to wave at. It's Iditarod time in Galena, and a lot of folks have wandered down to the checkpoint to wish the mushers well on their 1,044-mile trip from Anchorage to Nome. It's, it's, it's a lot of excitement here the, for about three or four days when all the, the teams are coming through. Robert Bent showed up to watch the dog teams come into Galena this year. He knows what they go through because he raced in the first Iditarod in 1973. That year, he was the first musher into Galena. Back then, it was a very different race. We started out in the morning. We had tried to look for that place, but we couldn't find a trail. We just made a big circle, see? And we came back to the same place. So we had to camp there again that night. This year, native musher Ramey Brooks was in second place coming into Galena and wasted no time in getting back out. Okay, we just had Ramey Brooks come through about two hours behind um, Martin Boozer here in Galena, and um, his, his dogs look like he's running real strong. A lot of people in town were waiting for the arrival of one musher in particular, Mike Williams. Hey, Mike. Hey, Rudy. How are you doing? I'm having the greatest time of my life. Okay. Good. Good. We got you in with uh, 14 dogs at 074. Ever since he started running the Iditarod, and I'm not sure how long, he's been running it for quite a few years now. He's been running under the sobriety banner. Mike has lost a lot to alcohol in his life. He's seen six of his brothers buried, all of them killed by alcohol. Mike, maybe more than anyone, remembers that the Iditarod is loosely based on the 1925 serum run, which brought life-saving diphtheria serum to Nome where the disease was ravaging the children. Mike sees alcoholism as today's epidemic in rural Alaska. About the serum, uh, diphtheria serum run, where um, it was a life-saving run uh, uh, from um, Nenana to, um, to Nome. And I took that um, as, a, as an example, as an analogy to what I'm doing, because like the diphtheria, uh, it's going to wipe out uh, our uh, native population here and uh, we're very fragile that we're only 30,000 Yupik people and the rate where the suicides are going the way the uh, rate uh, homicides or homicides are going um, we're not going to have um, any um, any more Yupik people left in the future. <laughs>
When we come back, we're going to find out what else is new in Galena, Alaska, and why that little community is on the fast track. Hi, my name is Sharon Raitan and I live in Galena and I want to say hi to my family in Barrow. Hi everyone, Heartbeat Alaska will be back. For more than 50 years, Frontier Flying Service has been your connection to rural Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, a proud sponsor of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska chooses the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And this is where we choose to house our guests that come from all over the world to spend time with us. And this is where we hope you will choose to spend your time when you come to Anchorage. Choose the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. Bye, Dad. Bye, Junior. From generation to generation, the passing down of tradition has been the native way. You never eat snow because you always you will get you tired. Survival in the Alaska wilderness depends on one's knowledge of ancient native secrets. Nowadays we carry this. I always carry it next to your body, the water. Purity guaranteed. Aquafina. <laughs> Bent knows how difficult it used to be to get health care in rural Alaska. In addition to running the first Iditarod, he also used his dogs to try to save lives. He talks about a man from Huslia that became terribly ill one winter. Oh, I hauled a guy from up there to here with dog team one time. To this village here, yeah. And uh, no doctor couldn't get help. So I turn around, turn around and hold it back up, back up. Next day, then I had a wide run with dog team. And he passed away. Today, Robert is witnessing the beginning of a new era in rural health care. He and other elders from the area are looking at the new health clinic just built in Galena. That's sure something, all right. It feels good. We have more space. We were so crowded with all the construction on fall. There was, we were just really crowded. Paula Summer has worked in the clinic here. most of her life and is this proud is to show off what's new. This is, our, this is for our emergency ramp when we had a patient with the ambulance run. We used to bring them up this ramp into the emergency room. This used to be our emergency room right here. That's all. Yep. <laughs> we had enough room for a gurney and some cabinets. This is our emergency ramp, and when we have a patient coming in, we just back the ambulance up to here, and we'll just open the door and wheel them onto this ramp and wheel them in the room. We don't have to do much lifting anymore, <laughs> which is kind of nice and easier on our backs. We're going to take your blood pressure again. And this is our trauma room, the emergency room. It's three times bigger than our old one. And we have a patient here. And that's Lori over there, the provider. She's a PA. The new clinic also includes a new wing just for mental health. When we have clients who come in with a concern about anxiety or depression and they go to visit the practitioner, she can just come and get us and we can manage the case together. It's really great for clients. Out here, we'll be able, our furniture hasn't arrived yet, but we'll be able to hold youth groups, evening sewing groups, AA groups could happen here, any kind of group. Um, but it's nice and private, which is very important in a village. We have a separate entrance here coming in the back. Um, and it's just a really nice all-purpose room and it gives us a lot of storage too. The idea is to get mental health more out in the open to try to lift the stigma that mental health is bad. The clinic in Galena wants to send a message that seeking mental health care should be just like going to visit the doctor, any doctor. This really uses an otoscope. 
Speaking of doctors, the new clinic has a way for doctors to see patients from hundreds of miles away. I've used this a lot, and I use it only with every patient that I see now, but it's just better in a way that the doctor, you know, we don't have to wait for a phone call. We get our responses back. The patient doesn't have to end up waiting for their meds until like later in the day because our response comes right back. Peter Captain so is a rural health aide from Ruby, so a village about 40 five, miles upriver from Galena. Peter is so demonstrating Galena's new telemedicine machine. The machine Check allows the doctors in Anchorage or Fairbanks to see a patient's injury through a tiny so camera five, that beams five, its five, signal to them. What we do is, we, instead of doing uh, medical traffic by phone, we use this and we just send our real cases to the doctor and the doctor responds to them. By now, so you're probably five, wondering five, where the money for all this came so from. Well, we no one knows better than this man. We had already drawn up some plans and, um, and uh, had a, a set of drawings for the whole facility uh, not fully engineered drawings, but we had uh, maybe 35% drawings before the Denali Commission asked for proposals. So we the Denali Commission was formed by Congress in 1998 as a way to bring basic infrastructure to rural Alaska. The commission is made up of seven members from very different backgrounds. The idea is to have a balance of government, tribal, and private sector representatives to make good decisions on what projects get funded. One of the first things the commission looks at with any project is what other groups or agencies could be helping out. The new clinic building in Galena, which also houses city offices, is a great example. We're here in Galena today to uh, have a ribbon cutting for a composite facility that includes the uh, clinic that the Denali Commission helped fund. It's a partnership between several agencies, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Community Development Block Grants, uh, the state of Alaska, the local community, all pulling together. The Denali Commission was the major funding partner on a program we call Fast Track. The new clinic and city building in Galena was completed in less than a year. Uh, it was a ready-to-go project that met all of our criteria for sustainability, community participation, and, and unity. The community, by pulling together, was able to make this happen. One thing that helps pull Galena together is breakfast. Yeah, at first, it wasn't all, all that good uh, up until about oh, four or five years ago, then, then all the different agencies and entities in the village started cooperating together. Uh, the school had started a, a thing they call a, a breakfast club where, where all businesses and, and, the, and the townspeople get together to, uh, to collaborate on, on what they're doing, you know, and what they would like to be doing. So, you know, out of that came all the, you know, all the, all the plans and, and whatnot for, for, uh, for getting things done in, in the village here. Well, one of the things you need to do is start off with a plan. In, um, in 1998, we finished up our comprehensive plan. And so we had that. And we also then spent some time actually with architects saying, if we build it, what is, what's going to look like? What's it going to take to really meet the needs of the community based on what we see the growth in the community and the, and the region we serve? And so we had spent some of our own funds making sure that we had our plan in place and that we knew what we were going to do once the money was available. And that's what the commission is all about. Teamwork, good planning, swift execution of a good plan, and ultimately economic self-sufficiency. The people here are impressed with what they see. I saw everything. I saw the equipment they have there, and I saw the, all their uh, pharmacist built places and where they uh, examined people. I saw the whole work that one day. Oh, wonderful. We all love it. We can't believe it. Then we don't have to go into town. You know, sometimes it's hard to get in. And they don't find a place to stay. And you understand find a place. And this is the kind of place for us to, for us to stay. 
very nice. Blue and bigger clinic. You know this place is going to be used. Most of our women go to Fairbanks to have their baby. All of our women go to Fairbanks to have their baby. If you've got ten women pregnant here, something's going to happen where this, this equipment's going to be used. And then that way you'd be, you'd be aware of what you're doing. And uh, then that way it's way easier. One, two, three, four, five. Marjorie Atla has been saving lives in Galena for some years now and knows more than anybody what the new clinic really means. To have a good clinic and to really improve the, uh, uh, all the machines that we use in there to get it modernized a little bit and you, you have a better chance of, everyone, uh, of having a really good uh, survival. And because uh, um, not long ago they couldn't they, they couldn't really sit a bone really good, but, uh, but to, to have to actually have the good x-ray machine and everything now, and it really benefits the people to be able to just go to clinic here, here right there in, in the village. Because if you want to go to Anchorage, let's say, that's a $500 round trip, and that's before you even get so, to Anchorage. Uh, just give you a little yeah, bit of history so, of how we got here. But it's, really need to be able to go into a clinic and know, hey, it's okay. If you look above the door of the clinic, you'll see a reminder of how far rural health care has come. Edgar Nolner was the last of the original serum runners and was grandpa to everyone in Galena. Oh, Edgar Nolner was just a sweet, just a sweet man. Everybody in town, if they were young, they called him grandpa. And if they were uh, in their 60s or so, they called him Uncle. He was uh, one of the last original serum runners. Uh, he carried the, the diphtherium serum from Whiskey Creek, which is about 30 miles upriver here, to right here. So uh, he, was, he died a couple of years ago at the age of 94, and um, we really miss him. He was, he was, uh, he was, very, he was very well loved in this community. He, um, he told people that he never had a drink in his life and never smoked in his life and did a lot of running in his younger days and exercised a lot and lived a, lived a very good life. Back at the checkpoint, another musher that's working hard to bring health to rural Alaska has worked up quite an appetite in the process. <laughs> Here's your Inupak lunch from a music, from a you know, pack two you pick. There's mm -hmm. your seal oil, blueberries, dry meat and dry fish, mm -hmm. herring eggs and muffins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going to have time to eat it here? Yeah, I'm oh, going to eat. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Mike knows it. So does Jeff and Marvin. Edgar Nolner knew it too. It takes real teamwork to bring health to rural Alaska. I always tell them to, um, to go for the best and just work together. And that's, that's how we got, uh, we're all working together as a, as a group. I think we're in a great country. I just think we're in a great land, you know. The Native people are in a great land and, uh, and we just need to try to uh, be respectful of it and be good stewards, you know. And that way it'll be here for our children and, you know, and down the, down the line, whoever comes later.
daughter. She's just like me. Works for every grade she gets. She thinks I dress like an idiot. And she wishes her chest were bigger. <laughs> she knows people who do drugs. I know she doesn't do them. I know. Because I ask. I ask all the time. A Klutna Pow Wow 2002. It's going to be May 18th and 19th at the native village of Aklutna, Aklutna Pow Wow Grounds. It's going to be an Athabascan style potlatch that you don't want to miss. When people say you're bright, they mean you've got a lot going on up there. It's not something people who use drugs hear much, because over time, drugs can change their brain. And the more times they try drugs, the more they want them. It's called addiction, and it's a disease that will waste your brain. Do the right thing. Do the bright thing. Keep your brain healthy. Don't use drugs. Before we leave today, I'd like to say hello to some of my good friends. Hello, Roy Big Crane from KSKC TV out of Palo, Montana, Salish Kootenai Tribe. And hello to everyone from the Seminole Tribes in Florida, Lawrence and the rest of the crew. Nice to have you with us. And Key Long and his crew, and Philip, the rest of them, and Navajo Nation TV 5, and many other reservations across America. We enjoy your letters, we enjoy your emails. And give me a call at 907 563 7440. Now, the Denali Commission is traveling around the state of Alaska. We're going to trail those guys because they're doing some great things, some new health clinics coming up. And if you'd like some information on just what's new with the Denali Commission, call. 888-480-4321. God bless every single one of you. And oh, before we leave, I'd like to leave you with some great shots of Carol Huntington and her bird feeders. Quite a few bird feeders, I must say, and birds to go with them. I'm turning out to be the Galena bird lady. Um, I started out by having two or three feeders out there, and then um, a couple of times they tipped over and spread, the, spread seeds all over the place. So then um, we had, well, maybe 10 to 15 birds all winter, and then as the days got longer, it wound up to be about 300. And they're all red poles. They winter here, they stay here year round, and uh, um, the feed bill's getting a little expensive. Some days I was going through about five to seven pounds a day. 